Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Start this lecture 40 with a thought process from great scientist Albert Einstein, who says, only a life lived for others is a life worthwhile. I think we should ponder about this thing and look at our life. Let us uh, recall what we learned in the, we had learned in the last lecture. We are basically started with, uh, of course, little bit about uh, solid propellant and looked at the stability of the operation. And then we moved into uh, what you call like various um, uh, grain structures and other things, right. And then we uh, looked at the liquid uh, propulsion systems and various components. And one of the major important component is the what you call the injection system. If you look at this injection system, and whose objective is basically to atomize the liquid fuel and oxidize it, right. But question arises, what do you mean by atomization and what are really processes which involves? I will just give you a brief, you know, uh, description about that. For example, uh, you might be knowing or you might have observed that if there is a liquid which is passing through a small orifice, right. It will be coming like a jet here. So, what is happening here? It is like a, you know, jet which is not being fragmented, right. It is the, it, that means all these molecules will be together and moving. It is, it is ended. That means, Although there is a flow, because you are applying little pressure or you will allow the pass due to the gravity, you know, like if I take a hole and put it. Now, <coughs> we need to disrupt it. Basically, atomization is the process of breaking the bulk liquid into the spray or into the number of droplets, right. That means, we need to apply certain kind of disruptive forces. And that disruptive forces must be greater than what? Resisting forces, right? Yes or no? What are the resisting forces which will be acting here in the liquid? Huh? Uh, what are those? Like viscosity is one of them, and other is your surface tension force, right? So, where whatever you are applying is basically the disruptive forces what? In this case, it will be gravity, if you are not applying the pressure. And if we apply pressure, it will be pressure, which will be, you know, momentum forces will be acting and other things. And therefore, there is no atomization. If you look at, right, and that is very important. That means, you need to have a higher resistive force than that of the disruptive forces, so that you can manage your identity. But if I look at our, our modern life, what is happening? We are getting disrupted, right? We become a kind of things. So, let us look at what is happening to the distorted liquid. As I will go on increasing the pressure, right, of this uh, at the upstream of the orifice, which is not shown here, right, then what will happen? It will be subjected to instability. Of course, that we call it Rayleigh instability and several other instabilities, the wavy and the liquid which will be spreading out and it will be interacting with the air. And the liquid, if you look at the, this is a film kind of thing being produced, is thinned down, right. It is a bulk is coming jet, you cannot really break it. So, you will have to thin it down. There are several ways of thinning down the things, right. That means, you will be basically disrupting. So, what is happening here? is that resisting forces is less than the disruptive forces. This is a very simple fundamental thing, right. And then as a result, this will be, you know, ligaments will be formed, 
from the liquid surfaces and these ligaments will be broken at further and it will be you know whenever ligaments and other things form they call primary atomization then it will be fragmented and interacting with the air momentums and other things together you will get the secondary atomization and droplets will be there right so basic idea is that the atomization occurs only when the resistive forces is less than the disruptive forces but if you look at our life our life is that we don't really keep our humanity we get you know affected by this disruptive forces due to the lack of proper education and control over our forces so it's a very interesting thing whenever i look at the spray i look at the life you know of course here objective is to uh, look at uh, how to produce the spray how to break the liquid how to break the bulk liquid into the spray and droplets and smaller the droplets better it is for the combustion purposes so and also its the distribution is very important i will be not getting into detail about that but i will, would like to give tell you what are the stages of atomization if i take a orifice if you look at this is basically orifice orifice right a small hole and through which the liquid is coming and if it is coming without really any pressure so you will find there is a undulation of this liquid that means it is subjected to kind of a rally jet break off kind of thing because of instabilities right and then there will be satellite droplet and droplet will be coming as you goes on making this little pressure so you will find this is going up and of course there it is not very high right and when you apply the pressure more you know this pressure increases if you look at pressure is increasing in this direction you know injection pressure so what is happening if the injection pressure is happening the liquid become a more straight because the momentum of the liquid is more so then it becomes subjected to unstable right and this distance i can call it as a break up distance you know the length of break up this is known as break up distance the where it will be no actually basically if you look at uh, you can say this is the basically break up distance because this under it is broken out right this distance and this is the core distance which will remain you know so if you look at this is lb break up distance and as it is uh, you know pressure increases further so what happens these droplets you know like breaks little higher that means break up length is decreasing with the increasing in the thing and in this case the wind because the momentum is coming some of the air also will be trying to win and it will be some chipped out you know like this kind of things will be occurring so that is known as first wind induced break up right and then when the pressure increases further right pressure is increasing along its direction okay as we are going from left to right towards that pressure injection pressure is increasing so then you know this instabilities go above and then oscillation it will be more vigorously oscillated so that it will be fluid uh, will be stick uh, you know ripped out and then this also goes up and then it is increases further if you look at then the you know started breaking of here kind of things and when it increases further you know then this is atomizing is just very near to the you know orifice itself of course if you look at the angle of this spray also is increasing that is also one good thing about that so uh, which will be helping in mixing kind of thing so in case of this regime you know what i am ask uh, talk uh, was discussing here the second wind induced break up like means more wind will be coming in trend man it will be breaking up and the break up distance it goes you know becoming reduced as it will go along so here of course the droplet size will be very small when atomization was so we will be operating in this regime of atomization because these are the not being used very much so i won't be getting into the processes which is quite complex in nature but what i would conclude that you need to have a very high pressure and a smaller orifice to have a you know some meaningful atomization which will be used for the combustion now i will be now talking about what are the kind of atomizer you know one will be using in a kind of rocket engines right <coughs> so there are uh, it can be broadly divided in two categories one is impinging 
atomizer, other is non-impinging. Mostly, the impinging atomizer being used in case of which propellant? Liquid propellant definitely, but non-impinging also will be using for non-liquid propellant. Okay? Whenever atomization is concerned, it is about liquid. We won't be atomizing gas, okay? Nor atomizing the solid. So naturally, it will be liquid. But what kind of propellant? It is a, there are two propellant we discuss about. One is hypergolic, other is non-hypergolic. So in case of you know in uh, impinging one, what we will be using? We will be using the hypergolic, not non-hypergolic, because we need to mix these bipropellants, right? Of course, the propellant can be bipropellant, monopropellant, right? Okay. But particularly when we are talking about the bipropellant, we should have the impinging, but not all the time as you go along, we will I will discuss about that. So, some of the uh, injectors I, which I will be discussing is sour head, doublet, triplet, coaxial, splash plate and swill. But there might be several other varieties okay, which uh, uh, being developed and designed because that depends upon the requirement and also the creativity of the person who is developing. So, that is very important. So, if you look at this is the first one, what we are looking at here is the sour head. Sour head means it will be having a straight orifice, right, which is like our sour what we take in the bath in every day. It will be going straight and of course, this is a fuel uh, inject, uh, this is for fuel and this is for oxidizer. As a result, what will happen? It will be converting into spray depending on the pressure, but it will take more time for mixing. As a result, the length of the combustor in this case will be higher. But the one advantage is that length of the combustor may be higher, but the heterogeneity of this fuel and air will be more in the near the injector head. Like if you look at this is your injector head, right. So, the flame or the combustion will be taking place little away from the your injector head. So, this is your injector's head, right. So, thus the you know the temperature or the heat cannot really come uh, not much you know will be coming towards the, this injector head and uh, you know the fuel properties won't be getting affected because you know like fuel property and there might be also a carbon formations and other things won't be there which is very important for the clogging of the atomizer for the performance of the atomizer so uh, but however you have to pay a penalty the length of the combustor will be high then it will become heavy and then you know all those things but if you look at this sour head is being used in earlier rocket, that is the V2 rocket engine. You know, you must be aware about the first rocket engine being against used by German against the British. So the, there is a in order to overcome this problem of you know like better mixing we want, and also the sour head can be used for the non-hypergolic you know propellant, where you need not to mix fuel and oxidizer to have a liquid phase reaction, right? But whereas in the for hypergolic, we need that fuel and oxidizers to be mixed liquid phase, so that some heat can be developed and it can ignite itself, right. So therefore, doublet is being used and it is a one good part is that it is being mixed at the uh, you know at a certain particular point, whenever it will be impinging on each other, there will be a in this zone, there will be a fan which is being formed and then per fan will be formed perpendicular to the what you call the plane uh, which I have drawn here. And this fan will be interacting and the you know with the air right and uh, then it will be also chipped out those uh, ligaments and then formed. But problem is that this kind of of course the, the droplet the size of the ligaments which will be formed will be dependent on the thickness of this fan which is formed and it will be subjected to instability, instability as well. The problem with this, suppose you know like we know that we need to have a higher amount of uh, oxidizer as compared to the fuel. So, therefore, for the same size orifice, then the momentum uh, will be higher for the oxidizer as compared to the fuel and sometimes you will be using. Of course, one can design such a that momentum will be similar, but if it is one of the momentum of the oxidizer or the fuel is higher, then the the meeting point will be different, meeting impinging point will be different and if that is different, then naturally your performance will be very poor, right. So, in order to overcome that problem, what is being used is the 
triplet where you will have the oxidizer you know it will be coming in the center and there is a fuel and then of course the fuel will be coming over here and then this is can be again used for the hypergolic propellant but you know it doesn't matter if one of the you know this thing is being higher and oxidizer being higher it will go little away but you can manage to have that but even but if there is a lot of difference then it will be leading to the problem but uh, you know there is a liquid phase combustion will be taking place liquid phase reaction will be taking place and also it will be compact and nearby but if you face this problem there is another one which we can think of using is known as a splash plate so you use a doublet right this is a basically doublet kind of things but however there is a flash plate in case of this impinging point not here it will go to here it will impinge into the plate itself and then so that you know you can convert it into ligaments and it will do that but there is a problem because there is a, if it is hypergolic and this will be heated and then you know you are having to pay some penalty for that so uh, there are several varieties if you look at this is known as the unlike impingement that fuel and oxidizer like and in sometimes we use for the like impingement like oxidizer is impinging into oxidizer and fuel is impinging into well in this case biplan the self impinging you can call it a self impinging atomizer kind of thing and this generally is being used for the non hypergolic propellant right where it is not required to ignite you need to have ignite separately there is no need i mean there won't be any liquid phase reactions which will be occurring so therefore it will be but however here your mixing time should be more so that it will mix oxidizer will be mixed with the fuel and gas phase there may be liquid and you know, droplets and then you know vaporization all those things so length of the combustor in this case will be higher so that is the you know like but it is used for the non hypergolic propellant there is the another one which is used very much particularly for the cryogenic engine that is known as coaxial kind of atomizer if you look at the oxidizer is going through here and here and in this case and it is having the fuel the fuel is you know passing through this and it is a coaxial in nature right so that what will happen like uh, if you look at in this case that um, uh, cryogenic engines or the any other liquid the fuel, the fuel is being used as a uh, coolant to cool the conversion diversion nozzle and also the body and the heat carries and the mostly it will be particularly for liquid hydrogen it will be a gaseous state so the amount of velocity with which will be coming it will be very high it will be order of maybe 300 meter per second whereas the liquid will be passing through the kind of what you call very low velocity order of maybe 30 40 meter per second so therefore this will be basically gas momentum which is a lighter one which will be because you need to have higher momentum to interact with this and then do that in order to augment the performance of atomizer people recess it that means what they will be doing they will be you know not in the same plane of the atomizer both the uh, what you call oxidizer and the fuel they will instead of this they will start here you know like there will be some zone where some mixing will be taking place between the liquid and the oxidizer the liquid oxidizer and the gaseous fuel so that it will be two phase flow and then you will ignite so that is basically is known as internal mix atomizer people are using nowadays this is a modern design and in order to overcome you know this problem of mixing and then good atomization kind of thing and compactness of the uh, what you call the combustors people are thinking of using a swill that means they will pass this you know Uh, as basically a liquid which will be passing through a swiller the tangential entry and then it will be having some angle it will be fixed and the you know the liquid film will be thin down when it is centrifugal force being acted upon that and then after from this here you know liquid will be coming out and then droplets will be ligaments will be formed and will come so that what happen it is going towards that and then mixing will be better of course it will be having a, a you know a hollow cone kind of thing and sometimes it will be solid cone as well right but what is important that it should be hollow but the distribution of the atomizers or the droplet also it will bad in that so you need to look at it it generally the swill being used even in the coaxial kind of things right you can uh, make it swill as a fuel uh, particularly in the oxidizer it is being used and sometimes it is being combined with oxidizer 
you know fuel also. So, there are various varieties and various tools, these are if you look at is the uh, elements or ideas are available, one can use it for different applications and other things. So, generally this coaxial kind of thing is being used for the non hypergolic propellants and impingement generally being used for the hypergolic propellants, right. So, let us look at uh, some analysis of the atomizer, I will just look at quickly, we know this thrust expression, the mass flow rate of propellant can be you know express uh, in terms of thrust and exit velocity or equivalent velocity you can use. So, what is the total mass flow rate of the this thing that is nothing but mass flow rate of fuel and mass flow rate of oxidizer. Suppose, what I will do, I will divide this by the mass flow rate of fuel, right, and then it will be cancel it out, right. If I say this is oxidizer flow rate, you know, by the mass flow rate of fuel is known as mass ratio, right, m r that is the mass ratio, then I can get an expression m dot f is nothing but 1 over 1 plus m r that is the mass ratio into total mass flow rate. And similarly, I can get an expression for the mass flow rate of oxidizer in terms of mass ratio and uh, mass total mass flow rate. Keep in mind that you should keep this in mind that is the ratio, mass ratio is basically mass flow rate of oxidizer divided by mass flow rate of fuel. In some places, people do other way, you will have to be careful. Okay. So, by what we will do? If I take an atomizer kind of things, you know, this is a small hole here and the P c is being applied here and this is having certain velocity v, right. It is a orifice, orifice through which the liquid is being pressurized, you know, right. I can apply a Bernoulli's equation. Of course, the losses will take care by differently and that is the P t c is nothing but your local, that is P is the static velocity plus half rho v square, v is the velocity at the nozzle or the orifice. So, uh, if I look at, I mean then velocity will be basically root over the change in pressure divided by the density, density of the liquid, right. So, uh, for, but, but that is for the ideal, you know in which it, there is no losses, no separation, other things. So, but whereas in real processes there will be contraction like this, it has to be contracted and there is a flow separation may occur, there is a friction, right and uh, it can be, we can modify this equation by using a quantity, we call it C d. C d is basically discharge coefficient and uh, that is the actual, you know, flow rate divided by the total flow rate or the uh, ideal flow rate. So, if I look at the actual flow rate, Q dot will be basically alpha divided by root over 1 plus zeta into A i and root over 2 delta p by rho. The if you look at alpha is the coefficient of contraction, that means how much it is being contraction, what is the area ratio between this inlet, if I take this inlet and if I take this outlet and relative value of kinetic energy loss, that energy loss will be there and delta p is the pressure ratio across the injector and A i is the injector area, cross sectional area at the you know exit of this orifice and C d is the discharge coefficient. So, what I will put all these together, you know, I can put into as a C d, like you know, for a, because when I am conducting, I need not worry about that, I will just put into C d. And if I express this in terms of mass, you know, mass flow rate, that is nothing but rho into volumetric flow rate, this is Q dot, right, into rho into C d A, I can get C d, if I just take inside, I will get C d A i root over 2 rho delta p, rho is the liquid density, right. Delta P is the pressure across the orifice or the injector, whatever you call it, I mean like basically up across the injector, that is the right one. So, for multiple injector, there might be several injectors, right, okay. I mean it is in a gas, in a rocket engine, we use several injectors, right. So, I have already shown you how it will be. So, mass flow rate would be basically m dot n i is the n is i n j is basically number of orifices, right. How many are there? Maybe 50, maybe 20, maybe 100, you know, like any number depending upon the design. And the MR ratio, 
of the propellant became mr is equal to m dot oxidizer divided by m dot f which is nothing but number of oxidizer holes or the orifices into C D of oxidizer. Keep in mind that C D for oxidizer may be different than the poor, right. It may happen, it may be same as well, but generally it will be different. And A O X is the oxidizer of individual orifice root over 2 rho oxidizer and the density of oxidizer delta P X that is the pressure difference between the and across the injector oxidizer injector and similarly for the fuel right and uh, if you you can design this you know values and finding out whatever you need and depending upon what cd and other thing those uh, data can be taken from experimental data or some you may have to design and conduct experiment yourself to find out what certain things so naturally because a liquid naturally it is a liquid flow right we are not dealing with a, a gas you know it is a liquid ok so it will be a encompassing fluid so let us look at uh, we will be looking at this impinging atomizer so let us look at that fuel is being atomized at an angle alpha f and oxidizer is being atomized in the alpha x let us say that this is in x direction this is in y direction and keep in mind that this angle is nothing but alpha ox plus alpha f right and that what we call it is basically a beta right and what we are assuming in this momentum of impinging that is same before and after the impact in real situation it may not you will have some loss ok but you are assuming that to be same for the design purposes for the simplicity and what we will do? We will look at y momentum. What is this y momentum? If I say this mass flow rate of fuel and oxidizer, there is a two component, one is this direction and this is in y direction. y direction will be m dot f v f sin alpha f minus the oxidizer, it will be in this direction, right. So, that will be minus m dot o x v o x sin alpha x is equal to m dot o x plus m dot f v m sin theta right. Similarly, for the x component I can write down the cost component which I have written here right and what I will do I will just divide this you know uh, by what you call equation 1 with the equation 2. What I will get? I will get tan theta is equal to the m dot f v f sin alpha f minus m dot o x v o x sin alpha o x divided by the cost component which we have already done that these are the things right. Now, if I take most cases the theta will be 0 you know if the momentum is fine it need not to go with a alpha provided if the momentum of the both the fuel and oxidizer is same it will be moving in this direction ideally. But however, right it may go move at a certain direction right yes or no. So, uh, if one of the momentum is higher it will be having this direction uh, if oxidizer if the, ox, if the fuel momentum is higher it will go in this direction if the oxidizer momentum is higher it will go in this direction right any direction so, but we will be assuming it to be 0. So, then what is saying that this became this expression equation 3 right will become m dot f v f uh, sin alpha f minus m dot o x v o x sin alpha is equal to 0 right. What we will do now? We will basically look at what I will do? I will just divide this equation by m dot o x v o x right m dot o x v o x right and then I will get this uh, v f by v o x sin alpha x and in V f I can put in terms of C d and pressure ratio right. That is the V for the velocity will be in terms of C d and root over delta p by rho right. So, that we are uh, doing. So, that delta p f by rho f is coming and 2 is cancel it out for the oxidizer you know that one. So, we will get sin alpha and what is this sin alpha right and the sin alpha will be coming and is equal to sin alpha o x, sin alpha o x is nothing but sin, 
sin beta minus alpha x because beta is equal to alpha x plus alpha o x, right. So, then you can expand this sign terms and then you know you will get uh, this expression and what we will do? We will take all this sign uh, alpha term you know this term to this side, right and we will do that. So, what I will do then I will take sin alpha f is the common, I will get this term right, this term as here plus cos beta is equal to sin beta and cos alpha x. Now, what I will do? I will divide by this cos alpha f and cos alpha f. So, this is cancel it out, this became tan alpha f. So, what I will get? I will get this alpha f is equal to tan inverse of this quantity, you know like which is of course, I can write in terms of this is nothing but a here basically 1 by m r, right. So, I will write that down and I will get because if I know this beta, right and I know all those things, I can get what will be alpha f and alpha o x, we can get very easily. So, you can use this as a design tool, keep in mind that for the better atomization, uh, people always suggest to go for beta is equal to 9, right. But however, in real situation you may not get, but you can, but this is the thing which you can use. So, you can use this for you know finding out alpha and then other play around this thing about the mass flow rate the delta i p and then look at what will be m r ratio, you can you know use as a design tool for this. So, let us uh, look at propellant feed system, we talk about injectors and atomizer how to go about it, but we have not looked at how to feed this liquid, because we need to have a pressure you know otherwise we cannot feed. So, to have it can be divided into two categories, of course, there are several other varieties, but I would not be discussing gas feed system and turbo pump feed system. Gas feed system is generally being used, where the duration of the operation is small number one and the requirement of thrust is not very high. That means, the pressure chamber pressure should not be very, very high. Otherwise, my overall weight will be very high, right. So, the typical gas pressure system can be think about a high pressure tank, which contains the A uh, gas. Uh, any gas basically nitrogen or argon or some other gas which is neutral and it will be pressurizing the liquid oxidizer right and liquid fuel and you do not need a feed system this is quite lighter enough and then it will inject the fuel to atomizer and then pass through the thrust chamber combustion chamber and then you will get this thing. This is a very simple system, but however limitation is that the duration is very small and if and the pressure chamber pressure should be small. You keep in mind that there is a lot of pressure losses across the injectors head. So, therefore, you know if you want to have a very high pressure in the chamber, then it will be you know at least uh, something uh, two times or three times that chamber pressure you need to have in the feed line and then you will have to go another you know very higher level of four or five kind of things high pressure tank, right. So, therefore, it is being limited, but in order to and then time duration should be small, otherwise you, your tank pressure tank will be very high you know, otherwise you cannot operate. But to in order to overcome that problem, so what is being done is that you use, we use a pump, the pump for the oxidizer and pump for the fuel and to run this pump, which we need to have a turbine of course, through the gear box we can use that. I mean you can reduce the RPM of the you know, so that you can get a better efficiency of that. And to run the turbine, we need to have a gas generator, another combustor that is a very important thing, otherwise how will run it, right. So, this is being used for a long range and for a very high thrust level kind of thing. What I will be showing now, you discussing about three types of turbo pump system. Right. There are three types, but there can be several other types as well. One is gas generator, one if you look at it is having fuel pump and oxidizer pump, which is run by the turbine, right. And in this case, the fuel you know being uh, separated, one line goes to the pre burner and other line goes to the uh, what to call rocket engine, which will be cooling and then it is injected into combustion chamber. 
and whereas the oxidizer again divide in two stream by the control valve one is the burning you know burner pre burner for the turbine they which will prepare high pressure high temperature gas which will be expanded in the turbine and this turbine will be expanded till the pressure uh, ambient pressure generally it will be low right in the particular when you are oper operating at the high altitude then the pressure ra ratio is quite high right then the number of stages you know requirement will be more and if you go for more number of stages then the weight will be more of course you will get a higher efficiency therefore this pressure operation operating pressure for this pre chamber is being you know very very low being used and as a result then the chamber pressure if it is not operated you know at a high and the work is not more then you cannot have a high pressure in pump the chamber pressure which is being limited to uh, you know low pressure generally people talk about something 5 mega pascal kind of things and it is this kind of system is being used in the what to call f1 rocket engines the most uh, which is used for the for a high uh, or the high thrust rocket engine is known as stage combustor if you compare the stage combustors you know it is uh, with the gas generator it is the same only difference is that only difference is that that uh, you know that high pressure gas temperature and gas which will be burned uh, will produce in pre burner is being expanded till the pressure whatever it is required that means after it is getting expanded turbine it will come into the combustion chamber and it operates and here it was a loss because the fuel some of the fuel or high temperature will be there uh, some of the this thing here you need not to operate at a you know this thing and you can operate this combustor at also a fuel lean some of the fuel can be utilized here as a result you can operate at a very high pressure this chamber pressure right combustion chamber pressure or the thrust chamber pressure which is order of 50 mega pascal instead of 5 mega pascal kind of thing so that is being used in space shuttle main engines you know it is being used of course little modification is there but there it is a uh, fuel and uh, oxidizer pumps are separated okay it's uh, to the same gas turbine but this is being separated right so uh, the another one which is being used the complexities of pre burner is not there rest is similar to that of the stage combustor but problem here is that like you can't really get a very because when the fuel will pass through it is not having you know uh, very high enough uh, pressure to operate in that to that therefore very less amount of pressure you utilize in the gas turbine because you will have to operate and therefore this is being used for the small rocket engine where you know the pressure chamber pressure is restricted to around 2.5 2.7 mega pascal kind of things so that is being used r10 you know something liquid oxidizer liquid hydrogen rocket engine and several other places so it is not that you should not think these are the only three but there can be several varieties depending upon your requirement depending on your mind depending on your creativity to meet the demand that is the beauty of the engineering work so <coughs> let us uh, look at what is ha happening in the processes in the thrust chamber right if you look at we have seen the rocket engines and then it can be you know like injectors head are there here and it is having you know like a two phase flow kind of thing heterogeneous right mixtures will be there and there will be also the with the velocity with which it will be coming is something 7 to 60 meter per second and if you look at the uh, the combustion behavior will be dependent on the spray quality spray quality will be dependent on injector pattern sizes number like number of injectors or uh, orifices distribution and type of injectors what we because we have seen several inject types you know and then the combustion behavior will be dictated so therefore this is a very important part for the to have this but uh, thing is that it will be having heterogeneous in nature this will be liquid phase vapor phase vaporization will be occurring right and also some of the combustion which will be coming into these places also because particularly in these zones right so therefore some kind of thing and maybe some reaction might be taking place but it won't be releasing any amount of heat that is known as injection atomization zone there is a rapid combustion zone where intense chemical reaction takes place and the local velocity will be increased by 10 times for example if it is 60 meter per second it will be going to the you know 
very very high velocity 7 meter per second it will be going to 700 meter per second right but however you know it's a order it may be go to 50 times as well you know but general you know it will be very high so there may be fuel region and oxidized region will be there and the radial velocity because here it is impinging the radial velocity will be there along with the axial velocity and there might be tangential if it is fluid here the radial velocity is more and uh, the uh, very very less and the axial velocity will be very high and then you will get a what you call very high velocity region and particularly in this zone uh, re reaction taking place but in this zone reaction will be reduced that is known as stream tube combustion kind of zone where steel combustion will be taking place it will be reaching going towards the uh, what you call equilibrium positions and but however the radial component is very small uh, negligibly small therefore it is a stream tube there won't be any mixing between the tubes or the stream lines you know tubes and uh, the velocity which will be order of something 200 to 600 even more meter per second and some combustion will be taking place and this zone where you know subsonic regime will be there subsonic because velocity is very high because the temperature is high therefore it will be subsonic okay so and this zone it will be expanded and some of, sometimes some of the combustion goes till the throat area right but that will be very very negligible it should reach so if you look at it, it is a quite a complex process you know that uh, amount of time residence time for this is order of some milliseconds you know 10 milliseconds 7 milliseconds 15 milliseconds like kind of thing so therefore it is a very intense combustion takes place as I told you, the amount of heat release in the rocket engines is much higher as compared to the you know, um, gas turbine, particularly per unit area. I told you it is around say 370 kind of things, you know, mega joule per meter cube. So, let us look at what is really happening in combustion zone. So, the, I will talk about two kind of things. One is hypergolic propellant that is spray forming of the droplets, right, non-hypergolic propellant and it can be having primary atomization and then when primary atomization occurring then vaporization of secondary atomization can take place right and there might be a gas phase mixing so vapor has come then you know fuel and oxidase can mix and it can lead to a pre mixed flame right some places it is not that all the places some places there might be a pre mixed flame there is another route heterogeneous mixing of the liquid and gas phase can take place and there might be a droplet combustion right I will show you in the next slide there may drop there, there might be spray combustion and sometimes the group combustion you know like the several droplet will be together will be burning right and two droplet will be interacting each other you know anything can happen then there will be gas phase diffusion flame also will occur so there is the combustion so if you look at it is a very quite complex whatever we have learnt you know diffusion gas premix flame and then partial premix flame all will be occurring in various places so it is very difficult to say what is happening inside and which is not being understood really till date. So, let us look at hypergolic propellant, the mixing in liquid phase will take place and chemical reaction in the gas phase uh, you know one is likely to occur because it is a hyp hypergolic in nature. So, vaporization reaction in the gas phase also will be occurring simultaneously. See this all processes whatever I am describing will be occurring simultaneously, not that one will occur like that way arrow is given no. So, then mixing of this gas and vapor and there might be atomization of fuel and oxidizer, there is a vaporization and the vaporization occurs it can mix and there might be a vapor phase reaction or the gas phase, vapor means basically gas phase reactions and then this some of this vapor will be also mixing with the liquid or the product and then it will be it will leading to the pre mixed flame right. There is another route which is only the atomizer there might be these are the group combustion what I am talking about and this is the flame you know and there might be a small droplet there might be another droplet here you know it is a kind of things which will be occurring right there might be one droplet here and another droplet here you know like it will be occurring. So, any complexities it can happen any permutation combination can happen it is random in nature. So, therefore, the combustion product you will be getting which is quite complex it is not easy to model it is not really easy to really even look at in experimentally ok, but system is working, but we have not understood what really is going inside. So, with this I will uh, what I will be talking about is one is the cooling of the thrust chamber which is very important, because if you look at lot of heat is being generated here and as I have told you 
that the amount of heat being generated is quite high. It is order of something 300 mega joule per uh, meter cube and the heat losses will be there to this zone. And keep in mind that the material you know is not there to withstand high temperature because very high temperature and high pressure. Pressure is order of, of 100 bar kind of thing you know 50 bar, 60 bar, 100 bar like that. So, therefore, the material has to be cooled to have a you know take care of this under high pressure temperature otherwise it will fail right. So, therefore, heat losses or the cooling of chamber is very important if you look at the amount of heat transfer which is occurring in this zone is very very small in the length of the combustor along the length it goes and increases and it becomes peaks at the throat area. Throat area is most vulnerable part of failure because there are almost two times or more than that what is there in this zone. So, there are several uh, you know methods which are being talked about one is regenerative cooling and film cooling, transpiration cooling and ablative cooling. So, let us look at regenerative cooling what happened generally the liquid fuel is being used which will take the heat and then vaporize. So, that you know this portion of the cooling you know like wall will be at a lower temperature. Of course, there is another way of doing is that you can you know uh, reduce the heat losses to the wall by having a rich fuel here in this zone. So, that you know heat would not be going is like insulating act that is of course, one can design and it is being used in your uh, cryogenic engines very much and then liquid rocket engines also, but there is a, a problem with that because losses will be very high and other thing. There is another cooling which is being used uh, is known as film cooling. In the film cooling uh, what will happen there will be small hole. So, is the hole will be here in the in the similar way across the whole circumference and it will create a film like a insulating layer between this combustion and zone which is at higher and between the metal. And this film is very important and it is having a length which is has to be uh, you know very very small distance has to be maintained otherwise it will be destabilized. And then it will be also oscillating because of flow will be very turbulent and other things. So, mixing will be taking place and it will be uh, if you look at the number of uh, film is very much and 10 percent of the liquid we can give otherwise you know it will deflect it will be participating and it is a loss in uh, you know. Uh, because it is not participating in combustion, it will be acting like a insulating layer. So, the ISP will be going down and another important thing that in the nozzle it is a very high velocity in the throat you cannot really cool it which is a very important one. In order to overcome this problem of course, one idea is that known as sweat cooling that is you use a porous you know material and then pass through this liquid right such that it will be having a pores and it will be very very low velocity a film will be created you know film is not like that way I have shown, but rather a film very small layer. And here in this case instead of 10 percent you know generally 1 or 2 percent of uh, fuel or the liquid you will be giving. So, that it will be good enough to have that, but unfortunately because of material you know it is not being used very much it can do any portion even including nozzle. So, that is a challenge what is being, but experimentally people are working on this. There is another one which is the ablative cooling right and this is the ablative cooling what is being used is basically at a high temperature it will be converted into a char and a liquid or a vapor you know depending upon what you are using and it will be receded, but those material which will be remaining is act like a what you call insulation. So, that it would not allow the heat to pass through the metal main metal right and in this is being used particularly in the nozzle region other places and there are two uh, you know uh, there are several ablating material, but the carbon phenolic and the silica phenolic in which being used you know uh, because it is having higher ablative temperature uh, particularly the silica phenol is having little better uh, particularly because it is insulating properties are higher as compared to carbon and then temperature whenever it reach 1400 or 1500 Kelvin depending upon your material then it will start ablating, ablating means it will be receding, vaporizing so that it will cool the thing. And of course, the throat region is very uh, you know uh, very very high and if it will reduce because of this ablative then there will be a problem. For that we use the graphite high temperature graphite, so that it will be take the high temperature and also you know some of the heat act like a insulating layer. So, 
what you call we will be now looking at the hybrid rocket engine and which is being used basically to have a better control and it is quite simple and safety kind of thing where we will be using the fuel. If you look at these are the fuel grain which is being used solid, this is generally solid and the liquid oxidizer is being used. Of course, you can think of any other combination, but generally the solid as a fuel. There are several fuel which will be uh, you know can be used, but it is having several advantages. For example, it is ISP will be lying between the solid propellant rocket engine and uh, bit and LPR that is liquid propellant rocket engine maximum value. And its specific impulse varies even during steady state operation, of course, due to inheritance variation mixture ratio MR what we have talked about. It has the ability to change the thrust level smoothly over the wide range. Suppose, you know you are moving, you want to take a tra trajectory or path, you can do very easily where the uh, liquid rocket engine one can do, but solid is difficult. So, that is the one advantage. It has a relatively lower cost as compared to LPR because the system is simple, it is only for the one liquid oxi uh, oxidizer, but the fuel line other things are there. And it has a higher safety envelope during storage operation as compared to the solid propellant rocket engine because the only fuel, even I you know fuel is there, nothing will happen unless it comes in contact with the oxidizer. So, it is also not mixed with the oxidizer, so it is a very safe and its mass fraction uh, you know like is uh, quite lower as compared to uh, the uh, solid propellant rocket engines. And of course, the certain silver liner, liner means some propellant will be remaining at the end of burner. So, that is having higher. So, that is the one disadvantage with this, but up, however, one can design the uh, engines properly. For example, fuels you can use polymers, polyethylene, STPB, CTPB, paraffin, several other fuels, whatever you use. And oxidizer, uh, you know, like liquid oxygen, uh, what to call hydrogen peroxide, nitrogen tetroxide, white fuming nitric acid, red fuming nitric acid, as a several of the liquid. Keep in mind that lot of interest in western countries to have their own even in the universities of having hybrid rocket. For example, several universities in USA having their own system, students are doing that. And uh, uh, in our place only the uh, IIT Madras they are working on this. If you look at the important one is this is the single port, the grain kind of things, but the limitation of the this uh, single port is that you know like. Uh, it will be having a restricted surface area, length will be more. Keep in mind that burning rate in case of a hybrid propellant will be order of one third of the solid propellant rocket, because it only fuel. So, therefore, burning rate is reduced. So, if you want to have a higher thrust, you will have to go for multi port uh, kind of grain and where the multi port grain design is very important, you know it is not that easy, because if you are having these holes and this having a wave support, it should be supported otherwise it will fall out out and then it is a very important. If you look at if I am having this kind of a port you know and if I go on adding this, go on receding then there is a place where this portion propellant will fall, because there is no nothing supporting. So, then therefore, it will be creating a lot of problem, because the thrust will go up or it may explode and other things. So, design is very important. And, uh, let us look at what are the processes involved during the combustion of hybrid propellant. This is quite difficult complex, but I will just give you a brief overall view. If you look at this propellant is here solid propellant, these are the liquids and droplets and gases are coming right. And it will be some heat will be transfer, I mean igniting of course, you can do separately, but let us say there is a flame. If it is a flame, there will be some solid, you know some heat will be transferred due to radiation, convection, because the fluid is moving right and this will receded and then this mass will be receding like you know it will be coming down, it will be regressing at a certain you know uh, regression rate. And some of the particles also can get into these are solid particle which will be also passing some heat and then you know heat temperature also will be going up and it will be peak at you know flame temperature here and then it will be having there is a thermal boundary layer, there may be boundary you know hydrodynamic or the aerodynamic boundary layers and then liquid droplets which will be coming you know will be vaporizing entering into that is a quite a complex process. So, therefore, it is difficult to 
talk about it, but however, one can really model it as a R dot is a C G M, where G is the mass flux is basically rho into V average velocity. This is the average velocity of mass flow rate, which is coming through that and this is the constant and for polyethylene and hydrogen peroxide, if you can get R dot is equal to 8 G power to 0 0.4 mm centimeter per second, you can get a semi empirical result. So, one has to be worry about the units when you are handling and it can operate over the 1530 to 1590 meter C star that is the character velocity equivalence ratio 0 0.1 to 2, uh, 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 and pressure of 3 mega Pascal. So, when we are using you cannot really use that thing for all like your solid problem and here because fluid is playing a very important role of this thing. In this case and some of the fuel will remain unburnt even at the exit. Therefore, multiport is very important to mix this fuel and you can have a higher performance efficiency. So, there is a lot more work has to be done for this hybrid propellant rocket engine. So, with this I will stop over I have uh, you know taken uh, give a very uh, bird's eye view of the uh, rocket combustions and rocket engines and with this I will stop over. Mm -hmm.